Hello, MGTOW. Hello, men. This is Howard Dare. Thanks for stopping by. So, I want to talk about women and the art of deception. But first, let me say thank you to everybody who's been stopping by, liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing, even donating. I really appreciate it. And if you haven't already, or if you're new to the channel, please go ahead and click the subscribe button, click the bell symbol next to it, and accept the email notifications. It'll help me grow my channel, and I would really appreciate it. Now, let's talk about women and the art of of deception. Sun Tzu said that all warfare is based on deception. And there are some advanced tactics of strategy, tactics, that most people are never aware of. Indeed, the effective strategist and tactician, you won't see their plans because all warfare is based on deception. So the really effective attacks and the really effective strategies, you won't see them. You won't catch them. It's the criminals who get away that are the crafty ones. The ones, the other ones, they're below average. So what does this mean in relation to women? Well, I'll tell you. And I'm going to come at this from a larger perspective because I want you to be able to see the forest through the trees. I'm not here to talk to you about an individual tree. I'm here to help you understand the overall concept. Okay? Now, there are so many things in life as a young person growing up and, you know, just as a person growing that you're simply not aware of until after the fact. So it's a, it's a tricky proposition. How do you pick the best course in life, through life, when you don't have a map and you don't know what's around the corner and people are trying to deceive you and the ones that are very good at it, you won't even notice it. Well, you need strategy. You need tactics. And you know that all warfare is based on deception. So what does it mean when someone is trying to deceive you, but you don't know why. You know they're trying to trick you. You know that they're trying to hide something, but you don't know why, what it is. What does that mean? It's an important question. Sometimes, oftentimes, trying to figure things out, to find the best way to move forward, we don't have all of the information that we need. You know, that's part of the challenge, is that you're going into territory where there is no map. You don't have a map. And the people, and some of the people are trying to deceive you, especially the women. So there are times when, when you have a problem, something that you can't explain. And you, in your mind, or on paper, whatever, propose various hypothetical solutions. And then you test them out. You play them forward. And you see if your solution fits the situation that you're dealing with. And if it does, you move forward. So you're constantly making this mental map of the world around you and the relationships around you. And then you're interacting with them on those assumptions. And depending on how they react and depending on what you want, you are adjusting your behavior. And you don't have a complete picture with that mental map. You don't know everything there is to know in the universe. You don't know people's motives. You want everything to make sense. This is what the human mind is striving to do. It's striving to find meaning for things, even meaningless things, right? But the relationships and the people you're interacting with in life, that's pretty meaningful. That's pretty important. You know, you, you need to get that stuff right. But you have incomplete knowledge and you have incomplete experience. You know, I think one of the first things that a kid learns in playing games and interacting with people, that if somebody says, don't look under the bed, that you really need to look under the bed. And if somebody says, don't look in the closet, <laughs> you really need to look in the closet. And anything that's out of place, all right, should attract your attention. So if you come into a room, okay, and someone is sitting there, not doing anything, but the curtains are moving, and there's no wind in the house, so whatever hundred other things you might see going on in that room, none of them are out of place, except for the curtains. What does it mean? Maybe you're one of those people who won't notice it, although 
that that's unlikely. Maybe you're one of those people who won't think about it. That's not that's not smart. Maybe you're one of those people who, when they can't explain something, they just give up. That's not a good idea either. So you're going to have to figure out why those drapes are moving in a room where nothing else is out of place and there's no wind. So that's the setting. Now, let's let's talk about women. I don't want to bust your bubble, but in nature, it's the males who exhibit the extreme ends of sexual dimorphism. It's the roosters who develop colors. It's the silverback ape who develops the silverback. In other words, these changes are so strong physiologically for the males that it changes their appearance. Their appearance literally morphs into that of a dominant male. Do women do that? No. Women don't do that. Females don't do that at all. So then why do the human females dress themselves up the way they do? With all their makeup, with all their colors, with all their perfumes. What are they trying to cover up? What are they trying... See, it's a tricky question, isn't it? Because you're thinking that they're trying to cover up uh, imperfections in their beauty. And no doubt they are. But that's not really what they're covering up. The females in nature, they're, they're fairly plain. They don't develop colors under any circumstances. I'll bet it feels good to be a dominant male. And I know that it does not feel good to be, you know, a lower ranking male, which, you know, we all have to deal with depending on, you know, where we are and what we're dealing with. But imagine being so dominant and so much in charge that, as I said, your entire physiology changed. So I don't know how you feel as a man most of the time. You know, but I suspect that a lot of you are walking around and you don't feel great. You know, you're just getting by. You're dealing with difficult circumstances. You're angry. You're frustrated. That's how I feel much of the time. So if the women are merely, if their physical imperfections are secondary as to what they're trying to deceive you of, what's the primary thing that women are trying to deceive men of when the women are wearing all their makeup and dyeing their hair blue and wearing all their tattoos? and all of their sexy clothes. What is it they're trying to exhibit? They're trying to exhibit the colors of a dominant male, of a silverback gorilla. That's what they're trying to do. They're trying to convince you that they are the dominant male. And that's why they're dressed and carrying themselves and acting in the outlandish ways that they are. They're trying to convince themselves that they are the dominant male. Now, what I want for all MGTOW is for them to be in the position of the dominant male. I want them to recognize that they are, in fact, the dominant male. Now, you go to the office, right, and you're just starting out there. You're not the dominant male in the office. Of course not. You join a martial arts place, and you're just learning. You're not the dominant male in that area. But when you leave those places, and you go home, and you're deciding what to do in your life, Guess what? You are the dominant male. When you see a woman that you find attractive and you think, you know, I'd like to get to know this girl, that is the prerogative of the dominant male. Now, you might, you know, you might go over to her and say hello and she might say get lost. Well, you know, no big deal. In your life, you are the dominant male. And I believe that women and the social institutions of Western civilization are trying to convince the men that they are, in fact, just disposable utilities. And the men believe it. And I believe that that is the source of many of men's frustrations, that there is this constant social manipulation and deception going on, that women are presenting themselves as dominant because they do have sexual choice. You know what I mean? As I said, the man asks the woman, right? And she, she rejects him. So that does put her in a certain dominant position, doesn't it? But she's never going to exhibit the physiological, biological changes that come with being a dominant male. She simply can't. But you can. Do you? Are you the dominant male in your life? Do you carry yourself like a dominant male? Some of the MGTOW might be hearing this and saying, I'm not interested in being a dominant male. Trust me, you are, okay? Because it concerns your health, it concerns your well-being, it concerns your satisfaction in life. I'm not suggesting that the man has to be dominant over women. I'm suggesting that he simply needs to be the dominant deciding factor in his life and that the women, okay, and the weak men, the blue pill men, 
around him. And the social institutions around him are trying to convince him that they are, in fact, dominant males because of the way they act and the way they carry themselves. And that should tell you something, right? That should give you a hint, right? I was talking about figuring things out. So how do you, in this position of the uh, disposable male, where the women and the social institutions look down upon you and will only accept you and give you approval to the degree that you are a disposable utility to them, okay? There's a real, that, that's a real tricky situation. You, I hope you understand that that is, you know, like the trap of the blue pill man, that the more he sacrifices himself to the women, to the culture, to the society, the more approval they give him. But at the same time, the more he's undercutting his own true individual nature. He's a tool. He can't really look at himself in the mirror, you know, if that's the way he did it. So I just want you to recognize that the women are trying to intimidate the men that the women are trying, this is why they move around in groups as well. You know, they're not dominant individuals, okay? But you as a man, you can be, but you have to take charge of your own life. And you can't be distracted by the pretty colors and the deceptive tactics of weaker people. You have to find your strength. You have to build up your strength. And you can't be deceived by the surface of things. There's a difference between what you see of something versus what that thing really is. Don't be deceived by the deception. Look through the surface of the woman, of the man, of the institution, of the situation. Look through the appearance that they want you to see and look inside to their motives, to why they're doing what they're doing and the tactics that they're employing and see their true strategy and then act according to that. And understand that you are the dominant male in your life. Not over others, over yourself and over your life. And don't be deceived. Okay, I'm going to leave it at that for now. Let me know what you think about this in the comments section below. Please like, share, comment, subscribe, donate. And join me again, Howard Dare, as I plan to have more content for you. Thank you, MGTOW.